Welcome to the Out of Home Insider Show, the loudest voice in Out of Home, where we're bringing you tips, tricks, and especially insider insights to help you be more effective and more efficient. My guest today, very special guest, Jonathan Wolf Barron. He's out on the West Coast, so we're exchanging a little bit of a time difference here, but he is not immune to the world around us and what's going on. So we're going to talk about that today. But like I like to start with every guest, Jonathan, tell, tell us, you know, we were talking about a little bit before we turned on here. You're not a traditional, you're not a media guy. You're, you're a trucking guy and you've got a mobile advertising company. Where'd you come from? How'd you get to out of home? Uh, I came from a small town in upper Michigan. Um, and how I got out of home was we were a family trucking company originally and 2008 hit kind of what we're getting into right now. And, um, things went bad. And so we were like, we got to find a way to make some extra revenue and uh, we were hauling for some pretty big companies, um, Miller Brewery, you know, Coors Light, that kind of stuff. And said, hey, let's start wrapping our trucks and see if we can get some, you know, extra income here. Uh, took that platform, moved out to the West Coast, got sick of the Michigan winters. And um, we've scaled since then and um, done things definitely more hyper local just in the cities themselves. And then right now we're, we're really hyper local and doing home deliveries, hospitals and open businesses. So there's, there's a few things I want to unpack there. And the first is that 2008, 2009, you know, the, the most memorable recession that we can compare right now to. Um, and in that moment, you pivoted from being a logistics freight company into being an advertising company. And right now there's advertising companies hitting the panic button. How did that experience, how is that translating to right now and how you're currently handling the climate? Um, we've always kind of been in the bottom of the funnel, uh, which isn't always a good place to be, but it's been, um, it keeps you hungry. It keeps you relentless. And that's what our team's been based on. So going from delivery trucks to advertising and there's, you know, I can go into the hype of, you know, people are like, there's no control, there's no tracking, there's no, you know, are they clean trucks? Um, we've solved all the, all those problems over the years that the original narrative that people have had with it. Um, and right now it's, it's a beautiful time because these drivers are, they're on the roads. They just cut all regulations on the trucks, literally we can't keep up with demand. So these guys are on the road 16 hour days, um, literally hitting 400 plus homes on average, um, hospitals, open businesses. It's been, it's been phenomenal. And so now finally we've been on this like bottom of the platform, like, Oh, Hey, we're on transit buses or something. Let's do some trucks where now it's like, wow, you guys are the only people on the roads right now. This is awesome. And so we're getting a lot of, a lot of cool brands are reaching out that we've never even thought about targeting before. And so so you're, cool. you're seeing new business right now. Is that correct? Right. Yes. There's a lot of people listening to this that would be especially interested in hearing more about that. Are you, is this active outreach to these brands that you've maybe had conversations with in the past? You said that some of them are completely brand new. Talk to me more about the new business side that you're seeing right now. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, we're, the hyper local is a new market. People are moving and I mean, three weeks ago you were talking to me, I was, I was losing my mind because I'm like, you know, our, 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 a lot of our targets were event-based, you know, sporting events. Our trucks were, you know, we do kind of what like Rapify does. They, they call it the swarm. We call it convoys um, where, you know, we activate them and they circle around the areas, um, incentivize the drivers that way. And just but real quick, of, for anybody that hasn't seen your trucks, we're not talking about like a Econoline vans with, you know, some billboards on the back. You've got like real trucks. Like are these CDL class, like, these are, these are big trucks, man. They're, they're good set. Yeah. They're not the, um, I grew up in like the big semi trucks. The problem with those is they're going state to state. Uh, there's no control. They sit down in docks a long time. Our trucks are the ones that move around, do your last minute deliveries. Um, and so they're, they're 26 feet, they're 500 square feet. It's a, it's a big advertising platform and display. So, right. Yeah. There's, there's, there's tiny homes that are smaller than the oh, footprint yeah. that you're able to offer. And for me, like in, in researching you and getting prepared for this, that was my first reaction when I went on the website, I was like, holy crap, these, these are like big kid trucks. These are not something you bought off the, the lot down at the Ford dealership. These are, these are big trucks. Are they specially retrofit or something to be able to, to handle static advertisement? What, what's the, how are you able to maintain a clean fleet and be consistent in delivering you know, a great campaign? Um, I actually had a, had a great conversation um, in February with Rick Robinson, and that's what he said. He goes, you know, we bought trucks before, but that was the problem: is, is it cleanliness? It's control. You know, we're not there's we're not the first company to do this, but I think we're the first company to innovate it in a sense of like, hey, let's put some accountability here, let's put some quality, 
and that's actually make this an um, advertising medium that people can utilize. And so, you know, our trucks, we're not running old trucks. We're all, all the trucks are five years or newer. Um, they're, you know, there's no side doors, there's no rails on the side of them. They're just, they're clean advertising messages. And we work directly with the, the truck drivers. We don't work with the big fleets and stuff. I mean, I, I have 15,000 trucks right now. Um, probably have access to over a couple hundred thousand if I wanted to, you know, open up that can of worms. But we're, we're really working on just the local guys, the small entrepreneurs that are trying to make money where, you know, we're, we're paying them, you know, four or five times more than anybody's ever paid them. And it's, it's directly going into the pockets. They're subsidized for it. And it's, you know, it's a, it goes right, you know, helps feed their families and stuff. And um, that's where my heart's been and just helping these guys. And, and so now like, you know, you look at these, you know, delivery relief campaigns, it's like, we've sure. been doing that all the time. And I, that's been my model, just take care of people, take care of my installers, take care of everybody. And, you know, business will naturally grow. And um, I never didn't have a big investor when I started this business. I didn't have anybody. I just, we just been literally from grassroots up and we've cash flowed since day one. And that's really important, right? right? Especially right now. And we're seeing it. We're seeing which companies were actually strong cash flow companies before because they're, they're a lot of the weak hands that are folding right now. So you approached this 2008, a recession, right? Limited resources and just sort of laid everything out on the table and said, all right, what do I have to work with? We have the family business here. We're involved with this through these big rolling things that go around. I've got 500 you know, square feet of surface space. I can sell that space, right? Where is their attention? And can I monetize that attention? You essentially looked at all the pieces and put it together. And what you just described, it does sound a lot like Grapify. It does sound like a similar, you know, mission-driven purpose, but with really big trucks. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that a sort of fair oh, parallel? I, I, I'm so glad Rapify came into the picture because I feel like I was running this thing by myself. Like there's like, who else is in the rap space right now? Like, you know, let's get, some, let's get some, you know, movement here. And actually my VPs, I think he's having a conversation with James uh, later on this week on Friday. It's so, great. And I it, love it, man. And, James Heller was the first episode and my son presented him with oh. a dummy hand grenade uh, on said episode. So James is a great guy. Um, it, you guys definitely, it sounds like have a similar mission. It makes sense. I, that I love, I love what he's doing. And you know, like I said, it's, it's really cool right now because all these guys are coming together. You know, a lot of people are like, Oh, car wraps versus truck wraps. You guys are competition. It's like, no man, we're, we can, we can all work it's together. It's billboards and posters, man. It's billboards That's, and posters. That's it. It's a exactly. bulletin on the side of the highway and a poster in a neighborhood. It's the exact same thing. Exactly. And so that, I, I love it. I mean, I'm talking, like I said, you know, we're talking to Jonathan with, uh, LED truck media. We're putting some packages together. We're helping. It's just right now is a really cool time. Everyone's, you know, they got a little more time on their hands. We're able to talk, communicate, um, and just really help grow this out home industry. And this whole mobile, you know, billboard, uh, rolling ad community. And so it's, it's really cool. I love what's going on here. I think it's, it's important to use the time right now to do that sort of thing, right? Because there's all this fragmentation. And if we think about, these are just different formats, right? Jonathan is, is a digital billboard. Jonathan from LA, LA Truck Media, he's a digital billboard. And James has the posters and you've got the bulletins in a traditional out-of-home company. It would just be one company, right? Mm-hmm. It would be, I have all of those things. I have digital billboards, I have bulletins, and I have posters. Which would you like? But there's this fragmentation because these businesses have grown out of like you described, different needs or opportunities in the market. So to hear that there's an effort sort of behind the scenes to, all right, we need to align here to make it easier for advertisers to, to do campaigns with us. What are some of the ways that you make it easy for an advertiser? What, like what, what's your process? I call you up, Jonathan, I want to do a campaign. I want to wrap some trucks. Some of your creative will have it on the road in three days. <laughs> so it's, can you target by audience? Do you have that conversation? Who are you trying to reach? Like what market are you trying to be? Does a lot of that direction come down from the agency side? Do you do much direct? What's the landscape? Um, well, in the beginning, agencies wouldn't even talk to us. They're like, oh, trucks, they're dirty, grungy, get out of here. Um, and then we're like, no, they're, they're quality. They're new. They're awesome. We got drivers. I mean, I, um, I did a 24-hour fitness campaign. We worked with them for the last like, four years. And I mean, all our drivers actually, we paid for memberships for them, you know, wow. they're wearing 24 hour fitness shirts, they're handing out flyers. I mean, they're, they're literally like brand ambassadors for you. And, sure. um, you know, if they're doing like deliveries for like Amazon or something, like, you know, we're able to fine tune all these routes. Like, I mean, that's my background is logistics. And so, Hey, we want to target the zip code. We want to be in a three to five mile radius. Okay. We got it. We got it covered. 
And so we'll send you a, a route proposal. Here's a, here's our route. Here's your competitors' locations. Our drivers, like I said, we take care of these guys. So they're they're driving your competitors' locations. They, they love it too. Let's snap pictures in front of it for you. Um, you know, and then on the whole like app side right now, we're it's really cool timing because we're we're fine tuning our app, getting some attribution into it, showing live impressions, um, able to retarget. So a lot of stuff that like Rapify has right now. I've been trying to do that, but like I said, I'm, I'm grassroots, no investors. So I got to, to build up to that level, but um, which is, you know, first it was just like tracking the trucks and now it's like, okay, let's really get into the integration side of things. Um, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, clients like it too. I mean, it's, these are huge trucks. They're, they're center displays, you know, just like a billboard. They're not a left read. They're not a right read. They're right in front of you. Um, your exposure time is longer. Um, we've had really good conversations with Billups um, before we even, got into the ROI side of things. It's like, let's do a measurability study. Let's see how far we can see these trucks, you know? Um, and we did a view, like a visibility study where you can actually see the, the a heat map of like where people look on the trucks. Um, so we've done a lot of cool analytics just on that side. And then we're integrating that into our app right now. So we can actually show real impression data and then have a third party back it up by us. So, it's great. We'll have to do a follow up to this where we can some of that back end because it is, it's an important conversation and so much of the responsibility sort of gets passed off from the media side, from the sell side to, you know, to the planner, to the agency. It says, um, you know, your relationships with the client and I'm just trying to sell you space. And the client is saying to the planner, well, I want a targeted audience and measurable, you know, return on ad spend. Give that to me. So there is this, there's, there's this fragmentation even in that conversation. And that's sort of a common theme, I think, you know, with some of the things that we've talked about on the show is just that fragmentation and, and how much cleaner it could be. So it's great to hear you taking that initiative to, hey, this is right. Here's how far away you can see a truck and here's how, where people's eyes go so you can set up the creative properly. And from the logistics side, I love what you shared there is being a logistics guy, I'm just trying to deliver ads instead of freight. Instead of me unloading 16 pallets when I got there, I'm unloading ad space, which is attached to the side and back of this truck. Oh, it's, and it gets, I mean, we get, we've done some really cool campaigns. Um, I got, I mean, like literally I'm in every state. I got trucks in the Florida Keys right now, um, Hawaii, all over the place. Um, but like, we can really target these. I've had trucks outside Warren Buffett's house before, like some campaigns that want to target him. Um, McDonald's for breakfast, right? Oh, no, it's, it's, um, yeah, I mean, we've had them on Facebook headquarters where they're doing it like a delete Facebook campaign. Getting we actually got kicked off the Facebook headquarters at uh, all campuses at one point. Dude, I love that because it's <laughs> it's it's a great concept, right? It's it's the audience of one. In that scenario, where I'm I'm an employer, I'm trying to get I'm trying to recruit the best shit. Let's just use sports, right? I'm trying to recruit the best athlete from this team, and he's going to be a free agent this summer. How dope would it be if you rolled up with a convoy of trucks and a series of wrapped vehicles talking about, hey, LeBron, come to New York. Um, we'll park him right in front and get the news newscast down there, getting oh, the PR on. coverage on it. And the drivers love it, man. They're and they're like because people just and truth, truthfully, the drivers have been just treated like shit for so long. Sure. Which it just breaks my heart, man. It's like right now, like they don't even talk to people when they're like they load up at night and then they do deliver like second class citizens. They really are. And it's like for the first time in history, like that I've been around is like, Oh, now they're actually heroes. And it's like, these guys have always been cool. And so like this, we've been partnered up with them from day one. And I mean, they got robots like literally stacking their trucks right now. So they have no one to talk to. And so sure. we just, they became our brand ambassadors. They're our, they're our partners and that's how we've been able to grow. And we, I mean, our, we grow every day more and more in our database, but it's just, you know, I, I line every truck up with, with the perfect client. So let's, I love those conversations too, because that's, I think that's what's missing a lot is like, hey, we're, what's your target audience? What's their demographic? What's their income status? And then like, okay, I can put a route together for that. For mm -hmm. sure. I, I think that that's so important from the, hey, let's have that conversation. Something that Brian Rappaport talked about, we had him on a couple of weeks ago from Quan talking about how important it is to get a great brief from the agency or from the advertiser that that says, all right, this is, this is who we're trying to, and, and you know, you just said, well, I'm trying to target Warren Buffett. Here's his address. Go park outside of his house. Done. So understanding who that person is and then your background in logistics, it's just a different, it's, you're just delivering something different and instead of pallets, it's this. So let's talk about the drivers for a second. Cause again, they don't get enough credit. And you said you've got drivers all across the country. You can have any campaign up in, in 72 hours. 
how are you able to be consistent with production quality, getting it installed? I mean, you're in Oregon, right? Yep, we're in you got a driver in South Beach. How do you make sure that it's the right material, it gets installed properly, are drivers all trained? Like, what's that's got to be a lot of a lot of logistics right there. Yeah, we have a we have a print house up in Washington. Um, we print overnight, ship. I mean, that's and then just over the years, you know, we've I've been burnt quite a few times, but we've you know failures always lessons learned, and so we just we got a lot of good quality wrap um, installers across the country. They're all local, so any campaign we try to keep that money local as much as we can. Our drivers are local, the installers are local, and um, yeah, we just coordinate it. I mean, we do we do quality checks before we do any printing. You know, make sure that. You know, there's no dents, dings in the trucks, anything like that. Um, and then, yeah, we, we get installed the next day. So It's exciting. I mean, we'll get a campaign as big as that. I mean, it's got a lot of staying power, too, right, to see a truck go rolling down the street with, uh, you know, you've got some pretty interesting campaigns going on right now with the, the products that you're delivering. You know, you're doing a lot of local delivery. You said hyper-local and out of home is really having that conversation around hyper-local uh, what's that, what's that mean in the world of rolling ads? What does that mean for big trucks and hospital supplies? We're, we're still delivering. I mean, we were doing conventions before we're doing, we've always, I mean, the world revolves around deliveries. I mean, everyone wants things just in time. So the demand of trucks has just increased like crazy. Um, and so we're just, we're just flexible. People move, we're moving with them. You know, Hey, we got to target all these hyper local markets. Let's take all our trucks and which is funny because that's the those, a lot of those trucks are the ones we weren't using before because they're in local areas. And so now it's you know, we're, it was always high traffic, you know, get me in front of the stadiums, get me in front of the people. And now it's like, okay, people are at home. Let's do it. Our impressions aren't going to be as high as they used to be, you know, with being on the road, but no one's on the road. They're all home. We're still hitting all these, you know, apartment complexes, everything. And, you know, they, when they back up, they got a little beeping noise. So, you know, a little audio to, Hey, what's outside? And a sounder, right? We're, we're, oh, I know. I'm, I'm looking out my window right now. I'm, I'm bored as shit in my house, so we gotta we gotta keep going, man. <laughs> I think it's great, and I think especially right now too is it's such a sensitive conversation, right? There's there's companies going under, you know, by the minute practically, and folks taking loans to be able to to make payroll this week. And uh, there's the pup, and um, so with that being said the attention that you have in being out of home right now, still being targeted, being smart, just, not just throwing stuff up, but as a few people are out and about, I'm, listen, I've been looking at my walls for the last 11 days. If there's something new on the road or if there's a truck that I'm looking like the value of the attention while there's fewer people on the road, that attention has to be really valuable. Are your clients or your advertisers looking at it that way or, What's, what's their thought process right now? Is it the undervalued buy? Do they see different value in the, in the hyper-local activity? What's yeah, that I mean, conversation? I think, you know, the auto home is going to pick back up, right? right? I mean, people are home. People are home right now. Okay, auto home's not as attractive. You might get some great, really great buys right now. I mean, I've, I've always helped buy billboards with my clients too. You know, don't just, don't just do rolling ads. Use a, use a billboard, get a wallscape, right. have your marketing matrix there. You know, I'm, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about, you know, digital media, but did you, you know, online ads are going to be great right now. Right. I mean, yep. but as long as you have that marketing matrix and everything can be synergized together, then I'm all for it. And auto home is going to pick back up. I mean, eventually people are going to say, Hey, get out of the hyper local markets. People are back on the roads, get them back on, you know, the high traffic areas. We're going to do it, but we're just going to keep being nimble and flexible. And um, our goals are, if our clients are happy and that's, that's, it's a win for me. I think it's a good goal to have. And to talk a little bit about the digital marketing side, you guys have a, have an agency, a creative arm as well. And you guys do some, you guys do some pretty cool stuff, right? I've had to be flexible, man. It's, you know, finding our little niche. Are we, are we mobile billboards? Are we truck side advertising or what are we doing? Um, and creative drives everything like without good creative. I got so sick of people putting like, Oh, let me, let me just check your market or check your medium. Let me put code truck on the side of it. And it's like, you know, let's get back to the old school of like Mad Men days. Let's get back to the, the creative and like make some, make something funny and capture their attention. And yeah. that's, what's going to sell. And I think coming into Q3, all these agencies are going to have to do something out of the box. Cause if you're just doing the same old slap my you know business card on the side of a billboard or truck, it's not going to work. We got to, it's got to get exciting. It's got to get engaging. Cause there's going to be a huge push here come Q3, Q4 that there's money still going to be spent and it's got to be, it's got to capture attention. 
right? And so that's I, I'm looking forward so to like, opportunities. and that's what I mean. I got a guy, my creative director is from Bulgaria, and like a huge win was on um, the 18th last month. He became an American citizen, oh, 17 wow. years in the making. Dude, the guy is phenomenal. But he always says he's like, American ads are so boring. Like you guys got to get creative with it. He just you know, we always get like pushed back from the clients. I don't know if we want to do this. And it's, you know, it is what it is. But now I think we're going to be in a situation where people are going to have to make a little bit more of a stance and how they want to market, how they want to brand their company. And it's going to be fun. And so that's why we did that. I just, you know, when, like we said, when I did those measurability studies and stuff, it's like you put more than eight words on a truck or on a billboard, people aren't going to read it. You can't have two calls to action, your phone number and your URL. Like you got to pick one, keep it simple. And that's what's gonna. That's what's gonna get the message across. That's what's gonna create a lasting impression, and that's what we need to do. So I got Yeah, that's why we have a creative side of it, and and then other people think like, because you have a creative agency, are you a competition? I'm like, no, we're just we're just here to help you guys. Like, I'd rather make your large format print something. You know, spend a little more time on it and make it more effective than hey, just pump this out in three days and now my truck's on the road. It's like no, let's let's take a little more time, dial this in, and I'll give you my blunt, and honest feedback if we like it. If we don't you know, validate against a couple other, you know, creative directors and see what they say. So. Right. Cause at the end of the day, you're going to get the same amount of money, whether it's terrible creative or great creative. It's, you could just take the money and run, but you're looking for successful campaigns. It's a representation and reflection of you, your family business, what you guys stand for inside of the industry. Like, so it's, it's important to find good partners like yourself, like the James Heller, the Rapifies, like some of the companies that we've mentioned, because it's that. In a fragmented industry, you need to have people in your pockets you can, you can trust to do a great job. So I, I think it sounds like the things that you're working on are so, so far outside of the typical conversation, like you, like you mentioned earlier on, about how we view mobile billboards or, or trucks with some sort of advertising. You're taking a real you know, advertising approach to it. So, you know, kudos to you on that. What's the timeline? You talked about some fun stuff, the app attribution, some of these things are some of these things in play now. What's, what's your timeline? We're launching, uh, we got three days before we launched, we're launching the, the new version of the app, which is, I'm just so excited because now we're finally like, I can actually show you real ROI in real yeah. time, which I mean, it used to, like I said, it used to be just GPS tracking and um, but we got the, we got the quality there. I mean, I, I started out doing banners at one point, like, cause that's what people did on truck ads. They're like, Oh, there's oh. two banners. And I'm trying to sleep at night. Is this thing going to fall off or what's going on here? And you know, then they're wrinkled. It's like, no, let's do some quality. Let's make things right. And so I love what James is doing with Rapify. We're trying to do the same thing with the truck side of things. And I think we're both doing, we're both pushing these markets together and there's gonna be some good things coming down the road in the, you know, the mobile billboard business and the, rolling car business and the buses and transit it's it's all coming together so how how many how many wheels do your trucks have um geez, eight so they got two so in the you're the eight two wheel rapify oh, we got six wheels i'm sorry i can't count today yeah you're, you're six you're you're rapify with six wheels what's that mean there you are that's it <laughs> i'm excited to see the back end of it i think that's going to be really helpful for advertisers um, to, to understand, all right, here's how we, here's how we assign a value to that. And, and in fact, I'm doing a virtual breakout session, you know, shameless bug on Thursday, every Thursday at three o'clock, it's always going to be live talking about targeted out of home and measurable ROI. It's a conversation just like the one that we're having, showing some of the tools behind the scenes of just how easy it is to create an out of home campaign that acts just like a Facebook campaign and targets the right people in a way that's measurable. So thank you for taking the proactive steps. There's nobody saying, Hey, you got to do that. And this is the beauty of free market capitalism, right? Is if I want to win more business, I need to provide a superior product. Investing in that is, is pretty exciting. And so we're, uh, we're at a point where we're, we're all sick of looking at our phones right now. Like I'm, I'm sick of them. And so like I took my, you know, it's nice right now because we actually have a little time. Me and my wife went for a walk after work and like, talking to more neighbors than we ever have from six feet away, but sure. everyone's outside or trying to move a little bit. And it's the things in the real world are going to capture our attention more. I, I got a you know, hundred percent feeling on this. And so billboards are, you know, being rectangle or, you know, something unnatural in the real world. So boom, you're going to, they're going to pop out to us. Um, out of home is always going to be there. We're going to be, it's going to be great. And I think we're going to still see at the end of this year, despite everything that's happening, we're still going to see a spike in out of home. Totally agree. Totally. And people are just chomping at the bit to get out of home. The brands, right? If you can right now buy the undervalued inventory, if you can, if you're a buyer right now, it's obviously a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. 
get it now. The value is going to be exponential six months from now. And you're going to be set up. So even if you don't know what you're going to do with the space right now, it could be an opportunity to maybe book some things, know that you've got it and that you got it for 10 cents on the dollar. Um, oh, you're, yeah, it's if you're for friends that can do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the, I think that's the issue right now. Just some of these businesses are still trying to figure out and just being able to pivot and be innovative right now is what you have to do. And so you'll see a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of companies come up from like, man, where were you guys at, you know, three, four years ago. So it's, it's going to be good. It's great. Well, to help more people find you, what is the best URL they should visit? Is it, is it the rolling ad site? Is it the agency site? Give people a few ways to find you. Rollingads.com. Ads is ADZ. I couldn't afford the Z at the time when I bought the domain in 2008. So um, I own the S now, so you can, you can find us at both. Um, and then if you want to email me, give me a call. Um, email is just Jonathan at Rolling Ads. So I'll, email. Email I'll link everything below. So uh, if, if you want to check it out, and I encourage you to do so. The trucks are really cool. This is not a truck that you've seen. It's the reason why we have Jonathan on the show. This is not the ordinary approach to truck billboards, mobile media. It's, this is not what you're thinking. You got to check it out. Hopefully you've figured it out by now that just from talking with Jonathan, he takes a really refreshing approach. So Jonathan, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with everybody. Hey, thank you so much for having me on the show. And if there's anything we can ever do, let me know. And well, I look forward to reconnecting with you later on. I'll just, I'll send you all the metrics once we get it. I'm, I'm stabbed. Listen, we're going to do this again. We're just going to, we're going to do a behind the scenes demo type day. So it lives out there forever and more people can look you up, more people find out what you do and uh, it just makes everybody better. Perfect, man. Thank you so much for having me on the show. You have a wonderful day. You do the and, same, uh, Jonathan. Take care, stay healthy. So, Absolutely. Talk we'll talk to you soon. Later. Bye-bye.